I am Arn Menconi and I'm here in LA, Hollywood, California, and I want you to meet a very special person here. His name is Keith Belay. He's known as a street artist teacher. Come on out, Keith. Thank you for coming out here. We're here in his studio in LA, and I want you to get an understanding of how you can make a difference or learn about how people are making a difference through their passion, and his is being an artist and doing it in the streets. So thank you very much for giving us time to do this. We've been hanging out all day today. We, I watched you go ahead and stencil and do some street art uh, here around the corner here. What got you inspired to do this? Um, I was an artist all my life and um, I actually went to art school for it and everything and did commission pieces for many years. Um, but then when my twins were born in uh, 2010, um, I wanted to, I don't feel like my voting really does much for me, so I wanted to send out a message. And <clears throat> one of the best ways to reach people is to put artwork up in the streets where it's actually right in front of them. And I had seen um, some like Shepherd Fairy Obey faces sure. and some Alec Monopoly pieces with the Monopoly Man and Free Humanity pieces. And um, I, this was in the past, and I just, I never really thought of anything I was willing to risk my rights for. But when my twins were born, um, there were actually some articles in the newspaper talking about how they were making cuts in the education budget and taking art out of schools. And my wife is from Europe, and she just, I remember her reading this article and just saying, you know, this is ridiculous, and uh, well, you, run, you guys run your country, and I, I agree. So um, that was something I was willing to risk my rights for and uh, put the images up in the streets. And at first I was trying to get caught. I was putting on uh, whatever surface I could. I wasn't messing up nice walls or things like that, but I was getting up on billboards and uh, rooftops and electrical boxes and stuff like that. And so that's that's what got me inspired was just the, uh, the cuts in the education budget and just feeling like I the only voice I could really have was to use my artwork and to put it up where people can see it. So we put this piece up, and this one is Cleaning Up Congress, or Capital Cleanup. Capital Cleanup, and it's his two children standing in front of a million dollar bill, sweeping up the Capitol, and trying to get money out of politics. But it also has another meaning. Can you explain how you took the million dollar bill in? Well, um, I wanted to put images out there that would catch people's attention. And so usually if you put something out there that looks like money, it catches people's attention. And because the money was not being put into education or into the arts, that's why I kind of zeroed in on using the, the money symbols. And the, the first image I came up with, I uh, used a picture of my daughter when she was about four months old, and then put her in what would be a million dollar bill. And then I actually flipped the image um, so that it reads backwards, because to me, if you're not putting the money into arts and education, then things are pretty backwards. And this was about five years ago. That's you right. start going out in the street, putting these uh, stencils up, mm -hmm. and you do stencil work? Yes. With cans? Yes, spray painting right. stencils. Um, but I also have done what they call uh, pasting, uh, wheat pasting, um, is where you can actually stencil on paper. Um, and then you take it out and, uh, and put it up. It's actually a little bit quieter and it doesn't catch the, the uh, police's attention as much because they live the, if they hear a can shaking and spraying, right. you know, they're gonna right. just, it's like a magnet now, to them. How many, how many pieces of art do you think you put up around LA? In the five years that I've been doing street art, I would say probably a few thousand pieces. And you're not getting paid to do this? No. This is all coming from your heart? This is, to me, this is a form of activism as well as a little bit of therapy. Um, it's activism because I've actually reached quite a few people um, in a movie that, has, that deals with uh, campaign financing as well as a book, a couple of books. And um, so it has not necessarily reached, you know, each piece reached a bunch of people, but there have been pieces that have reached people that have given me more opportunities to reach other people. And, and he's talking about John Wellington Ennis, who I interviewed last week. And you could go to my YouTube page in order to see that interview. But John made a movie, Pay to Play, which featured teacher 
and a bunch of other street artists. And then I started studying about them, got in touch with John, asked him if he would get me in touch with teacher because I wanted to understand well, the artists are the ones who are seeing things first and helping culture understand how it could know what's really going on. You did it through for, for your children, and now you're spreading it out to more and more people. And, and how are you finding this is possible? You know, you already sort of answered this, but how it's cross-pollinating and making a difference. Absolutely. Like, I've met people while I've been putting pieces up that have led to other people noticing my work. As, you know, people taking pictures of it, posting it, that's a good way to reach a lot of people as well. Right. And it's, it's a way that everybody can, can do something. In you which know, anybody can do what I'm doing. You're, you're, you have a lot of different things going on in all of your art that I've been looking at. You're telling a story that's political, and there's not a lot of political street artists in L.A., and you're, you're bringing in history, you're bringing in stories of political policy making, you're bringing in fraud, corruption, but you're making it really beautiful. We well, have to try to find a way of catching people's attention to get them to be more aware. If you just keep, you know, just putting up posters that look kind of the same, then they get to where they're just going to glaze over that. So you have to find a bunch of different ways to uh, to reach people. Can, can we show them your uh, teach peace symbol that a lot of people have seen? I don't know if you're familiar with this. I saw it before I knew about teacher. Maybe you've seen this. It's teach peace in the Red Cross symbol, he's the one who made this, invented it, and now it's starting to get out everywhere, and that's really cool. And then you have a skull that, skulls are really in now, it's hip to have them in your, on your bookshelf or in your office, in your cocktail table, whatever you guys are doing. This one tells a great story, but could you show this one? This basically shows how if you put some fat coin, because this is a bloated coin, into education, um, then you're going to have a lot of creativity and a lot of beautiful colors. But if there's not enough money in education, which you see this coin is not completely full, then basically you're going to end up with uh, some dark and terrible things, probably. So, may I? Sure. This is the real Hamlet moment for our society, to be or not to be. That is the question. Whether or not to fund our youth through education, health care, and other issues, or to not, and go to the dark side. So what I would recommend is you get in touch with teacher and ask them how you can get one of these, and let's start sending these to our senators and congresspeople who are sitting on the education committees and letting them know we would like to fund education, not the dark side, of politics, war, etc. This is just an awesome piece. I gotta get one of these. How can people find out about you? I have an Instagram um, account that goes by teach r and then one. Yes. Uh, I have a website that's www.keithbeal.net. Um, and how do you spell Beal? B I E L E. So it's www.net, keithbeal.net. And they could see both. The work that he does sort of make a living so he could do some other things. And to be clear, most of the work that he's putting up, and I'd like you to describe this, it's legal in this city in order to put up street art. You get permits. Yeah, and there's there's different ways of doing street art. It doesn't have to be illegal like I was doing for a while and you still reach a lot of people. If you approach a business it has a wall that a lot of people see, you'd be surprised at how accommodating they can be if you go in and say, hey, I have this message I would like to convey, and I'd like to paint it on your wall, and just for a couple of months. And then, you know, I'll come back and paint it over to back to the way it was. It's a great way of reaching people. And you just want to have a conversation started. That's how it all gets started, is a conversation. You want to have a conversation. So this is a conversation right. starter. And that's I, how it gets started. I think that, so here, you don't have, I'm not an artist. I have an iPad, I have a laptop, I have a Facebook page, I have a Twitter account. I reach out to different people. All you have to do is go down to your town council with some of your friends who are artists. And you could say, could we put up something in our community? 
and then take it down. Or you could go to a for-profit company and say, could we put something up and we'll take it down. So you don't have to be breaking any laws in order to tell the truth. You just have to be inspired. Just find an interesting way of, of conveying what it is you're trying to convey. Any final messages? Um, just go out there and do something. Do something. Don't sit back and, and, and complain. I think that says it all. Man, thank you so much for all the work that you're doing, all the love that you're putting in everything. We're blessed to have your vision out in our streets. Thank you for making your efforts. I really appreciate your efforts. You're welcome.